Alright folks, uh, today's going to be a little bit of a, a different video than I would I normally make. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to actually do like a review. This is going to be like a continuation of uh, the um, original review series that I used to do on Red and Shooty. Um, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, comment on that after the actual actual review but for now I'll just talk about the game because that's probably the part most people are going to want to hear um <laughs> I was going to do this whole thing where I write a script and uh, just sit here and like read it off but I realized like when you write a script it's super super boring you have to like sit there and really like think about what you gotta say um <laughs> I mean I gotta kind of think about what I gotta say now but I it feels more natural this way it won't it, I don't know I'm just gonna do it the way I'm doing it now but anyway so the actual game though is what we're here to talk about um <laughs> So this is a really good game. Ghost of Tsushima is solid. It, it is great in almost every aspect. I don't think I have any real complaints for the game. Uh, maybe they'll come up as we as I talk, but um, but yeah, this is a solid uh, title. Um, the story, like I guess we'll start with story is um. What, some spoiler warnings. Um, the story is basically the the Mongols invade Toshima Island, and you're playing Lord uh, Jin, uh, Jin Sakai, Lord Sakai, and uh, basically you, you're there on the beach with a whole bunch of your samurai brethren, and when the Mongols are invading, and y'all, most pretty much almost all of them get wiped out, except for you and your uh, your uncle. So, yeah, basically, you spend most of the game uh, as a like a lone survivor type, just going around committing like basically guerrilla warfare on the Mongols and stuff like that. And that's actually a big part of the. Um, it's like a key point in the story is um or a key theme a, th a key theme in the story is um basically sakai sacrifices his honor during this whole this whole uh thing he he essentially has to choose between or you the player i guess you choose between you know being the honorable samurai or um you basically you do whatever you need to to complete the mission sort of scenario um i say choose i don't think there's actually like any point in the game where like your decisions kind of matter except for the end maybe um the very end is like the only time i recall like an actual decision mattering uh the rest of the time you're they're, they're mostly like dialogue options and stuff like that you go through um that isn't to say that this game doesn't have depth. It's just the it, this is like old the old school. Um, assa this is like this is like a assassin. I'm gonna bring this up again later, but like this is like old school Assassin's Creed games where um, you you just you experience the story of the character in Assassin's Creed like the Ezio trilogy. You experience Ezio's story. In this, you experience Jim Sakai's story, his uh, fight to save his home, um, and his conflict of sacrificing his honor for the sake of saving his home. And in the end, it does uh, end up... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm jumping there in this part. Um, I, I must have forgot I was recording. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> yes, I am recording this audio live. Um... Or I'm recording this audio after I took the footage. Anyway, um, so be, that's like the whole central theme. Um, by the end, you end up killing the 
you defeat the invaders. That's uh, that's kind of a given. Um, this is the spoiler part. Spoiler: If you don't want to hear it, skip. Let's skip. Let's say skip like a few few minutes ahead. Um, I'm not gonna bother telling you how far ahead in the audio. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, Lord, so, Lord Sakai, or Jim, Jin Sakai, he, he ends up saving his uncle, and you work with, like, multiple characters to liberate the island, um, his uncle, though, is the most, I guess you could say, important part of the story, because his uncle really, really, uh, is he's honor bound he is all about keeping tradition you need to stay honorable in your fighting you can't stoop to your enemy's level um are you cowards and then sakai though he's kind of he's kind of beyond that point he's at this point where it's like we got to do what we need to just to survive to defeat the enemy and honestly like it you, you kind of feel you kind of feel for both the characters and all that you kind of feel like, or at least I did anyway. I shouldn't say you. I kind of empathize with both of the characters. Because they both, you know, they're both are kind of right in their ways, and they're both kind of wrong in their own ways. Like, Sakai really, like, like yeah, he's not wrong. You have to, you have to adapt to the uh, Mongols, because the Mongols don't care about the J Japan, or the Japanese Samurai's uh, honor code. They don't care about the, uh, they don't, they don't care about that. In fact, they use it to... They openly use it to fight the samurai and to um, use it against them. Uh, um, at the same time, Jin, Jin crosses a few lines that maybe he shouldn't have crossed. Like, there's a part where he poisons a camp of Mongols to... Basically, I, like his reasoning was, is he wants to uh, prevent a massacre at a bridge, but at the same time, like it probably it was probably overkill. He, you know, um, not a it wasn't a it's not like a clean cut good like good good or bad decision making. Um, sort of thing where you could definitively say you're you 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 100 percent agree with the character because again if um if if you go to like from the uncle's perspective you know again like he's not entirely wrong you don't want to stoop down and use dirty tactics and stuff like that to defeat the enemy you want to you you want to keep you want to stand by your morals and all that at the same time it, um yeah that like i said before the enemy is not does not care about the morals and stuff like that. So, it, you uh, you kind of empathize with both characters in that regard that they both are right and wrong at the same time, and you kind of, or I can anyway. I should I I should say I, I don't like it when people say you can because it's like you're asserting your opinion on me, Mister. Don't assume my opinion. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's uh. It's a it's a very good story. It's solid, um, very respect, very respectful and all that. And I love and I love it like because it's <laughs> so we have like two Japans. Um, we have old Japan, which is what you see in Ghost of Tsushima, and then you have new Japan. In old Japan, the culture is very elegant. It's very subtle. It's graceful, and then the New Japan, the culture is very bombastic. It's very loud. It's sporadic. It it's in your face. Um, I like I like um, I like old the traditional older Japanese culture and stuff. Or I should say I appreciate it. Um, I'm not because I'm not a foregone expert on it, but it's uh, it it is like very beautiful. It's like very beautiful, just elegant. Um, what's another? One? Um, and you get a lot of you get to experience a lot of that in this game. It doesn't feel like um a lot of game journals, you know. Uh, not to get too political, but they're 
tried to this game was not made in Japan it was made in Amer like I think America um, and a lot of game journals were not happy about that they thought it was insulting cult cultural appropriation and I don't see that in the least bit in this game it's very respectful to the culture I don't feel like it's insulting it, it's got it may, it might have some commentary on the samurai co code the I believe it's called Bushido code but it, it doesn't feel insulting it just feels like it's co like more of a light commentary and it doesn't feel like it picks a side it feel in my opinion anyway it feels more, it feels more like it's putting uh, just putting things in perspective more or less um, now from the gameplay standpoint this game is the gameplay wise this game is solid it is great I mentioned Assassin's Creed earlier and yes that is a very accurate way to describe um, um, Assassin's Creed is definitely like a great way to um, more or less describe the gameplay in this game it, older Assassin's Creed not newer like there's a um, I guess I can I have time to go off topic just a little bit but there is a strict difference between um, Assassin's Creed and like like let's say Assassin's Creed 1 and the Etsu trilogy and from everything else after that there's a strict difference between them because they like Assassin's Creed 3 they really simplified the combat in that which I not a hundred percent a fan of like uh the 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 differences in the Assassin's Creed games go like this. Is okay. So in older Assassin's Creed games you had multiple enemy types. And we're not we you, you had multiple enemy types. Like you had you would have like a sword guy, you would have a heavy guy You'd have like a lance type enemy, and then you would have a like maybe a light enemy type, like someone like just somebody who's a little more spry on their feet. Oh, and then bow like bow bow people people with like bows and arrows or like at one point they turned it into guns, which was a neat neat thing. But those were like your enemy types, and they're very like carefully crafted there were specific ways you had to fight each enemy for the most part um the only issue was is like this was a problem even with the older assassin's creed games but uh, you had you could it was very easy for a player to heavily rely on the parry mechanic which is you just when the enemy attacks you parry the attack or uh, what was it called then you used to block and then when they attacked, you did a counter attack, um, and that was a problem with uh, uh, that was a problem that existed in the older Assassin's Creed games, but it wasn't like the main thing. They actually had like a lot more depth to the combat in the older Assassin's Creed games, um, and then in, but then like after when Assassin's Creed Three rolled around, they they heavily leaned into the counter-attacking, um, and then, and then they removed a few enemy types by Assassin's Creed Black Flag, like, you went to down to just three enemy types, you had, like, a, uh, you had, like, a regular infantry, you'd have, like, a heavy guy, and then you'd have, like, a, an officer, and that was it, like, the officer was maybe, like, a light, lightweight enemy, but it, the combat just became stale at that point, it was just very, like, basic as opposed to the older ones the older ones there was more nuance to the combat and stuff it's just that yeah, was the only issue the only issue was you can like really really lean on the crutch of counter-attacking I remember when I was younger playing Assassin's Creed like I would just like hold down the the block button every time the enemy came towards me counter-attack and um, that's not exactly how you do like that's not exactly all you could do in the older games, but I do recall that was a pro like that was a thing that could happen. And then they made that basically a feature in this, in uh, the later Assassin's Creed games. 
in Ghost of Tsushima, it's a lot more like the older Assassin's Creed games, but they definitely made it harder for a player to lean on the parry mechanics like a crutch. They're very much so more adapted toward... Uh, the parry mechanic it, it's more like a in the moment during combat sort of scenario as opposed to um the the main as opposed to a a cheap save if you will um in my opinion this game actually encourages players to be much much more aggressive to always be on the offense um i don't i don't have a lot of combat i i stupidly didn't re like record enough during the main campaign i kind of like thought about doing this review afterwards um but generally speaking combat in this game is much more fast paced and much more aggressive uh, the player needs needs to be on the offensive for the most part um that is to say that you can't be clumsy like there's times where like if you get really clumsy and very reckless you will you will like suffer the consequences of those actions you have to be very um nimble with your combat and tactful uh you especially do not want to be completely surrounded by enemies the game gives you plenty of tools tools um too and then they also have like different stances for different enemy types which which i thought was a great addition like so i can't remember the names of them but essentially like you have a stance for sword enemies you have a stance for enemies with shields you have a stance for enemies with lances and then you have a stance for like the big heavy duty enemies in fact you might actually see some of that coming up right here maybe i can't remember if i did a standoff with these guys at the bridge um but basically you have different stances and it's very good for uh it, it, it's good for Essentially, um, for, for, it's hard to explain. It's just good for uh, making combat more diverse. Uh, an issue I consistently had was that you had to hold down R2 to switch stances, and the issue I kept having was the you probably see it actually in one of these clips, but <laughs> I would accidentally switch to the lance stance after hitting the enemies. Like, or I'd like switch to another stance and then I'd press triangle because heavy triangles heavy attacks, and the heavy attacks would uh, just they they break your enemy's guard. Um, but sometimes I press triangle too soon. And it would switch to the lance stance, and I would never notice. It's you have to be very careful not to do that when you play this game. You have to like be patient and wait for the uh, stance sub menu to disappear before you like jump into your next attacks and all that. Otherwise, you will accidentally just swap in a stance and put yourself in a position where you're now using the wrong stance for the wrong enemy type. Uh, and, it, and it does actually matter in the later game. In the early game, it doesn't matter really. They, they have like different grades of enemies as you go along, um, which plays in, mo into the different enemy types. Um, but basically, the the I call them the white enemies. They're like they're dressed in like garbage white rags essentially. They're the easiest ones you could take them down sorry. with just they the basic do it. the basic stone stance. But, um, you can see right here, that's, that's the, this is me switching stances. Not necessary for, not necessary for, uh, bandits, but, uh, as you can see right there, I didn't even need to break that guy's guard. I literally ran up and just fucking whacked him, but, um, yeah, it's very meticulous in that regard I guess you could say uh, they have different of course like I said they have different enemy types but they have different grades too like it, it's very in-depth but they have lances swords 
Shield Shields. Big guys. And... Or, oh, bow, bowmen. And then they have, uh... Grenade, grenade throwers. Um... So, every... Every section has, like, different colored enemies. Like, different color armor types. And then, the thing is, is, like... Those enemy types change depending on what color they are. So, in the red area, for instance... Red, the red enemies, which are, like, one above, uh... Uh, the white rag enemies they have like their big guy they have their big guys their heavy enemies have shields so you might spend some of the time using I think it's called the water stance to to break the their shields but eventually you do get the this I think it's the stone stance I can't remember but it's the one where it allows you to fight bigger enemies but that again but that changes again like um the blue the blue heavy enemies just have like an axe and then the but then like there's the yellow heavy enemies and they have like these clubs that are like cannons essentially um and then above them is the green ones and they're just they're just basically tougher red enemies uh the lance got the lances get um their their blue the blue lance enemies get shields. Um, I don't think they had lances in the yellow tier, which was odd. They didn't have grenadiers in the red tier. They have grenad uh, the grenad the blue grenadiers throw uh, like flashbangs basically. The ancient ancient uh, Japanese flashbangs I guess you could call them. The the um, yellow ones are fire. All of the yellow enemies do something related to fire, uh, and then then the green ones. I, can't, I don't even know what the fuck the green guys threw. I I never gave those guys a chance. Like by the time I got to that part of the game, I was not giving those guys the time of day to fuck with me. I would kill them before they could do anything. Uh, so the sword men are like, you know. Again, like, uh, the red ones have two swords, the blue swordmen have, like, a, just a one big sword, the yellow ones, I think the yellow ones have a big sword, but they light it on fire, and then the green ones, I think, just go back to two swords again. I think the green tier, except for the archers in the green tier, the green tier is essentially, like, a, uh, I don't know why I killed that poor deer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I killed that poor deer. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, but I think the green tier is basically like a better version of the red tier. I'm not 100% positive about that. Uh, they also had... The, sh the shields are pretty much the same the whole way through, except the yellow ones, they have... Uh, the yellow shield guys have... Um, have... Uh, they, they again fire. They, for the most part, everything's the same, or I, everything. Every tier has like the same types of enemies, but they always change up like what exactly that they like their attacks or what their attacks do. Um, you can see it right now on screen. I'm fighting another enemy type you see in the game. They're like the straw. I think they're called the Ronnie or the Straw Hats. You can't tell because I used the demon stance there, but um, straw hats are one, some of the more tougher enemies in the game. They're just they're supposed to be like talented, like samurai, sort of like Lord Sakai is. So they're very, very much adapted to those uh, combat tactics. I killed another fucking deer. Something's wrong with me. <laughs> you can't even get anything from those deer. Um, <coughs> he, <coughs> excuse me, but yeah, they're all, uh, it's very intricate combat system, <laughs> combat system, oh yeah, they also have, uh, the officer class, which are enemy officers, so they're tougher enemies, they take a lot more hits. 
for the most part throughout the game you can't assassinate officers however at a certain point in the story you unlock the ability to s slaughter officers which is you basically decapitate them and decapitating them unlocks the uh, de it, it gives you a full demon stance the demon stance is like the fifth stance of the game and all it really is it's just like a it's like a infinite it's like a it's like a invincibility mode it just basically makes it so you you could kill everything in one hit it's something like it's nothing really to write home about I guess it it's fine it I used I used it a lot. It's just uh, makes combat easier. As you, a lot of the skills you want actually end up unlocking along the way. The enemies become much more uh, afraid of you. Like at this point of the game, like maybe you'll see it in some of the any any combat footage I do put in. But you'll you'll see it. Like you'll kill a guy, and then like three of his buddies will just turn and run. Like there's just the way this game is it's um uh that that's combat though like that, that's the combat in this game anyway um they have a fuck ton of collectibles in this game tons of it i've seen people online i've seen this one i'll probably put put the picture of it in here but i've seen this one idiot and he uh, this one stupid journalist, and I swear to God, game journalists, they need to be lined up and shot, because they're just, they're stupid, they're absolutely fucking brain dead. I have not seen one game journalist with a good opinion, almost ever, but this one game journalist was giving this game shit, because how many, like, collectibles are in the game, and it's the dumbest thing ever, because the collectibles and the, East, like, all that kind of bullshit in this game actually plays into this game this game takes I, it feels like it takes a little bit of inspiration from uh, it feels like it takes a little bit of its inspiration from uh, what's it called that uh, Zelda breath of the wild and breath of the wild you have all these shrines and stuff you go to and when you complete them it adds to your character's abilities, like, you know, you get more health hearts, more stamina meter, um, maybe you unlock a new ability, but everything in Zelda Breath of the Wild the builds towards Link's strength. Ghost of the Shima Tsushima is the same exact way. Every, there's like fox dens, um, there's these things where you go and you chop bamboo and all of it builds towards your character's strength it doesn't ju it's not like there to wait it's not there like most other games like say far cry where they have you go hunt an animal and may in like by late game in far cry games you generally have all of your uh, we'll say far cry 3 and 4 in particular in late game far cry far cry 3 and 4 you have all your pouches upgraded all the way, so by the time you get to the second half of the game, you're kind of like pointlessly upgrading your pouches, or not even like you're not even upgrading your pouches. You just get the you kill these like animals for their skins, and they don't actually do anything for you. They're just kind of like, you know, there. Um, you could sell them for money, but like by then again, you probably have bought already bought all the guns you want to buy. Um, so they're kind of like a wait, they're kind of like waste, wasteful filler in a lot of ways. And Ghost of Tsushima, it doesn't, again, it doesn't do that. Everything builds towards Sakai's strength. And it does it the whole way through the game. Like, Sakai, you, you're very weak in the beginning, but then by the later game, you get pretty strong. And... Even in late game, it, it's not like overpowered strong. Like even in the late game, when you get, you can get like very easily like killed if you're not careful enough. Um, but everything builds towards Sakai's strength. It doesn't feel like wasteful filler um, that was put there for the purpose of essentially just, you know making the giving the player something to do to 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 basically a lot of open world games have this issue where 
they have to make an excuse as to why their game is open world. And I'm not saying that because I don't like open world games. Because I love open world games. They're my favorite games. But there's a problem with a lot of them lately. And it's that they have to make an excuse as to why the player is running around. Um, and that's just not, it's just, Ghost of Tsushima is not like that. They, they actually make sure everything matters through the whole game. And that's uh, very commendable of them. <sighs> you don't see it in this, but there are, you, you, you do get a horse and you do get to ride it. I, um, just full disclosure, any game with horse, with horses in it, I almost never... Uh, I almost never, uh... I almost never, uh... Ride the horses in an open world game. It, maybe... In Red Dead Redemption 2 I did, but... Or uh, the other Red Dead Redemption game, but... I find it extremely annoying in most open world games when you have a horse, and you have to keep getting, getting off and on the horse. Um... Just to collect things. And this game actually, believe it or not, fixes that issue. They have, uh... You can actually, like, you don't have to get off the horse, you just, whenever you're close to something, you can just collect, uh, whatever objects, uh, you know, are dropped by enemies, or if it's like a, some resources, that sort of deal. Anyway, though, um, I think that's really all I have to say about this game, because honestly, like, everything's solid about it, the soundtrack even, like, very atmospheric. Um, doesn't feel intrusive. <sighs> There's lots of uh, mechanics that I obviously didn't quite touch on quite as much, like the bow and all that. But it all, uh, but it all blends well, and it's fun to play. It's uh, so I definitely would recommend playing Ghost of Tsushima. I would recommend uh. If buying it and playing it. I believe they're coming out with a DLC sometime soon. I think it's actually dropping today. Um, I don't know if I'm going to buy that and play it. I don't think... I, no. Um, <laughs> I discovered this, but I really don't like DLCs most of the time. I think the only DLCs I ever liked are any, like, Bethesda title, or even, uh... Or even, um... Uh, Call of, Call of Duty, where it's like their DLCs, map packs. I generally don't like DLC though in these kind of games. Like it's like Doom Eternal. I loved Doom Eternal, but I'm not gonna lie, the, the I did not care much for the DL DLC. I thought it was kind of blase. It's it was not bad, um, by any means. I just I don't know, man. It's weird. I anytime I play a game with DLC, I just can't like into it like a Bioshock even like I couldn't get into the DLC it's it's weird I don't know um but they they do have DLC coming for this so if you want more after you beat the man game there's that there's also legendaries mode the legends yeah, mode which I never I never played probably should have but I never got into it um Uh, I think that's all I really have to say about the game, honestly. It's good. Play it. By all means. It's, um... A lot of people say that this is, like, basically Japanese Assassin's Creed. I'm kind of inclined to agree with them in a lot of ways. So... Uh... Yeah. Buy it and play it. Now, for the... Uh, other part. So... I'm not, well, me and Red are not doing the other channel anymore, he, he has expressed that he's just not interested in doing it anymore, and I completely understand, he's just got, he's got a lot going on in his life, so, um, I'll leave it at that, but he's got a lot going on he needs to deal with, I, I, however, decided I'll do reviews on my channel here, um, if uh, anybody, 
I might I might find a, another co-host. I am open for finding another co-host because I feel like uh, it's a lot more fun to to bounce bounce information off of someone else. But for now, though, uh, I'll just do a couple solo reviews every now and then. I I could probably churn them out quicker the way I'm doing it now. We used to we used to record everything on Audacity and like use Sony Vegas to edit videos and stuff. Me and Red did. I'm doing all this through Share Factory <laughs> because it's much simpler and easier for me to do. Um. So if you're wondering why there's kind of a drop in quality, that's that's why I. I apologize to the, to the one fan who cares about the Red and Shooty channel. Um, I will probably do another review sometime soon. I just gotta find the right game to talk about. Um, but for now, that's all I really uh, that's all I really have to talk say about this. So uh, yeah, goodbye. Okay,